So here we are, day two. Day, day two? Day two? Here we are, day two at Uncle Doug's farm, and I just want to show you guys around a little bit. This is a beautiful, beautiful, very cool place. Yeah, so I've been sleeping here. It's been unreal. And here's my brother's amazing van. So Doug is a, a champion welder. He's got, he's got shops all over the property, and he'll, he'll go around and find, I guess, what other people consider junk, and then turn it into masterful works of art. Just shelves and shelves of stuff. Who's that? Come here. Hey, puppy. Oh, you're a big dog. How are you guys doing out here? Yeah. I wanted to show them around the uh, the workshop a little bit. Okay. I made your brother do the same thing. <laughs> so welcome to Doug's uh, mirror work studio. He's finally got the table that doesn't move when you're bending on something. <laughs> this is the latest series from the Forge, Cutlery Birds. This type of work doesn't uh, beat me up too much. So. Wow. Exploring that. Here's the um, one of the forges. This is a tunnel forge that I use for drawing a long heat. So if I have to bend a long circle or a sword, sword maybe, <laughs> like one does. Power hammer. This is uh, an industrial revolution tool. We'll spark that up for you, Wes. Sure. Originally, that was run on a line shaft, which would run the entire length of the blacksmith shop. And uh, it's a, a clutch, a slip clutch with a belt, so you can control the uh, speed and intensity of the blow by the foot treadle. Yeah. 1890? 1890. Wow. That's the patent date on that. So hmm. I bought this from the original owner, and they bought it in. Uh, I think it was 1922. All the forges are propane. So this is another oh, propane yeah. forge. Swage block for swaging. This is a forging term. Yeah. So the number of shapes, profiles. Classic anvil. Classic anvil. There's my go-to hammer. Yeah. And pretty much everywhere you look is something that you've done, right? Yeah. There's a few projects. That's beautiful. That are in progress. And it seems you particularly enjoy birds, eh? Uh, well, it seems to be something that creeps into my work a lot. You know, yeah. A lot of commissions have been birds. So, people see a bird and they think, oh, we'd like one. Mm -hmm. so, the way it goes. Because of the nature of the work, I like lots of air flow around. Yeah, so, it's a little cool in the winter, but... For the most part, it's uh, it's pretty good. And you said you keep you keep these here to keep the other wasps out, eh? Yeah, right. So if you if you hang an old nest, they come in looking for it, and they see all oh, this territory is taken, so you they move on. So it's worked quite well. I mean, you can see a few that were started, oh, yeah. you know, up in the rafters, but they uh, you know they don't seem to stick around, so it works out well. As you can see, you like it, you know, I need a full pallet, so I, uh, I've been bringing in material for a few years. So if you need something new, you just go out here, pick something out? That's right. Bring I, it back I in, I can almost shipping. always find what I need. You know? mm -hmm. It's like Canadian Tire without the checkout. That's cool. And both the kids are metal workers. I mean, both Bill and Lindy have their welding tickets. So. They take take after their dad a little bit. Well, they just thought, you know, this if this is the gig that's going on, I might as well learn how to do it, and uh, so they can build anything they need. To. This is all mine. Oh know? wow! Yeah. You know, there's a tendril from when I was doing uh, wine cellars. You know, that would have been a great tendril. And I still pull from this. You know, that's a great thing about the steel is I can pull from it and use those elements. There's a feather. Huh. Probably when I was doing a heron. So how long have you been working on this shop? Uh, I think I built this shop five years ago. Yeah. Yeah. It was kind of a temporary thing just to get working. 
and uh, never got anything else built. You know, as, you, as, you, as you know, there's several other buildings and projects on the go. So. <laughs> this is this is Bill's work. He does a lot of uh, skulls and big dark metal. <laughs> Everywhere you look, there's something. Yeah, yeah, there's a project that was for tree frog uh, cabinet makers. It's a little bit frightening. Yeah, yeah well, it was. Uh, <laughs> I had to cut it out. I had. We wanted it was a door knocker, and I had two tree frogs mating. Yeah. And he didn't like that. I figured that was a little bit too weird. A little so. bit too much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I cut one of them off, and that was the one I bucked off. Ah. Yeah. It's great, you know, at certain times of day when the lighting's good in here, it lends itself well to... Oh, neat. Yeah, it's just magnetized on there. It's a rare earth magnet. Rare earth magnet? Yeah. Maybe this one. Mm -hmm. It's strictly ceremonial. <laughs> <laughs> and what were you saying about the, the radio here? Uh, the radio's been on for 15 years. <laughs> Literally never turned off. No, never turn it off. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of a security system. You know? Yeah. I do switch between uh, CBC 1 and 2. Mm -hmm. That's about it. Look at all this. That's really gorgeous stuff. Oh, I know it looks chaotic in here, but I know where everything is. Well, thanks so much for the tour. You bet. Doug. You're welcome, Wesley. Oh, that's cool. This is Doug's work. You can see just the sheer talent and brilliant and energy that he puts behind every piece. So the plan now, we're gonna hop in Jamie's van and drive about four and a half hours to Nelson, BC, which is where he's gonna be going to school for two years, and which is where I'm gonna be living for two months. We'll catch up with you guys on the road. These are supposed to be good for heartburn. Mm. Leafy. They have a really ingenious system of keeping criminals and thieves away. It's just this incredibly scary thing. I'll show you. 